Oh, please, Dr. Dvor. Yeah, but it's still not quite right, is it? What? Let's try bringing it forward a little bit into the light. Oh, wait. There we go. <laughs> How's that? Oh. It's incredible. This whole exhibit is incredible. I still can't believe I'm getting to work with these pieces. And with you. I know. Egyptian artifacts are fascinating, aren't they? They seem timeless somehow. Almost as if they were created only yesterday. Like they were haunted almost. I mean, no, that's not a very scientific statement, is it? No, don't apologize. Isn't it the essence of art to breathe life and spirit into an object? I think the Egyptian artisans would appreciate the thought. Do you really? I mean, coming from you, that's really something. My friends laughed at the idea. Well, you tell them to be careful, lest they invoke the ire of the Egyptian gods and goddesses. <laughs> I will. Oh, thank you, Dr. DeVore. Thank you. Poor Paul. Poor Paul. <laughs> Look at you, basking in that adolescent hero worship. Well, enjoy it, Paul. It's just a pity that Catherine doesn't show the same enthusiasm about your work. Or you. That's true, Anthony. She's on her way here right now. She wants to share my, my career, my life. I cling to that thought, Paul. She might be coming here to tell you something you don't. Sure. I've heard enough from you. And if you do marry her, how can you be certain that when she puts her arms around you, she won't be thinking about that with Scorpio? Enough! Enough! <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Mine. I'm sorry, sir. We're closing now. I'm not here for your blasted waffles. Where's Colton Shaw? I don't look like his nanny now, do I? Don't kid yourself. Um, only tenants or invited guests are permitted in the apartment. Thank you very much. Please stand aside, you wretched hash slinger. I am warning you. No, I am warning you. My great-grandpa Dimsdale was sent to Australia for teaching manners to an Englishman. And I don't mind a bit repeating family tradition. No. Listen here, my good woman. I have reason to believe that Colton Shaw is holding my wife up there. Well, I don't care, my good man, if he's got the Queen herself stashed in the bread basket. You take one more step and you'll get a personally delivered fist in the eye. What's going on? Where is she? What have you done with my wife, Carson? You're talking to the wrong guy. I've been out there myself looking for her tonight. Don't expect me to believe that bilge, please. First of all, you came barging in at the Quartermain, uh, saying that you were married to Ariel. Then I get a call from General Hospital saying that she's disappeared. Now, damn it, where is she? If you just calm down... Calm man. down while you and Charlie Prince systematically strip me of everything I possess. My title, my fortune, my quest, now my hey, wife. Look, get a grip, Ashton. I'm trying to help you. I want to find Ariel as much as you do. Oh, oh, I see. So you don't deny that you two are lovers. Um, um, uh, I was just going out the back to count these. Excuse me. We were, but that was a long time ago. Look, the reason that I want to get a hold of Ariel is to clear up this marriage license deal. The WSB claims that it's authentic. You mean to say that you have to ask the WSB if your marriage license is authentic? You ought to know. Well, is it? I don't know, okay? He doesn't know. And I suppose you don't know where Ariel is either. It's a very, very long story. And I don't really care if you believe me or not. If you want the, some details, if you want the truth, go talk to Van Buren about it, okay? Oh, this is preposterous. You expect me to confront a man like Van Buren because you can't remember whether or not you're married to my wife? Suit yourself. But if you do happen to run into Van Buren, you might want to ask him about Yasmin Bernudi. She's disappeared, too. Hmm. Well, perhaps I will ask him. Yeah, I thought that might get to you. At least I knew where to find him, having a little tete-a-tete -tete with my very loyal and warm-hearted former wife. We'll speak further on these matters, Mr. Shaw. You may count on that. What a night. Thank you. I must say that I am grateful for your charming company this evening, Tracy. <laughs> I was afraid we weren't going to be able to finish our conversation that we started this afternoon. Yes, Mr. Shore's disruptive entrance certainly affected our conversation, didn't he? I suppose you're curious as to what our conversation was about. No, not really. Are you really leading a double life? Well-renowned businessman and internationally feared 
soldier of fortune? <laughs> That is rather a ridiculous notion, though, isn't it? Although, I must say, I should be complimented. It sort of gives me an air of flamboyance, the dashing and elegant international brigand. Not that you need it. It was Van Buren's reputation. Uh, it's quite impressive on its own. That's very kind of you, Tracy. But enough of this trivia. Now, you were asking earlier this afternoon about your ex-husband's aborted quest. Were you serious about continuing the search? Extremely serious. If I can convince Charlie, Lord Charles oh, Ashton yes. into keeping the bone, will you back the project for your fair share? My dear Tracy, I would not dream of taking a penny of what is yours or your son's. Now, as a matter of fact, being of assistance to someone as charming as you is reward enough. Then you'll help? I will toast your good fortune, and if you can convince Ch Lord Charles <laughs> to provide the dragon bone, well, you will find the funds at your disposal. Mm. To your kindness and generosity. Thank you. I should also like to drink to something I admire very much, a woman who wants everything and knows how to get it. Of the day, I brewed it up fresh. You didn't have to do that. Well, I did it in memory of my great grandpa Dimsdale. You know, my mum used to tell stories to me about him, and he got a 10 year prison sentence in the colonies for treating a lord just the way you did with Lord Ashton tonight. And you know, in the ninth year, he met my great grandmum. You know, everyone said it was love at first sight, but of course, they had to wait till he was officially a free man before they could get married. Oh, what's wrong with the copy too strong, Colton? Oh, I'm just not really in the mood to talk about weddings, I guess. So I heard. Uh, not that I could help overhearing, actually. You know, I mean, I do try to respect people's privacy. That's one of my mottos, you know. Did you marry Lord Ashton's wife? Oh, Prunie, not you two. Come on. My apologies, Colton. I was just thinking that maybe you'd like to talk out your troubles. Oh, hey, I would love to if I could remember what they are. What, you mean you really don't remember any of it? Sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Worse than leaving the bride at the altar. Well, it's not for me to be the judge, you know. I've got the problem at any stag one at that on. What was that? Well, oh, that was just home from the Odyssey. It just means that I shouldn't no, no, expect no. to understand but anything. But it was Greek, wasn't it? Yeah, Carlton, you recognized it. Thanks. You know, I love languages so much. Can you do me a favor? Are you busy tomorrow? Well, I suppose I could take the day off, yeah. It's great. You speak Greek. I'm going to make some phone calls. I'm going to call uh, the Greek consulate, the embassy in Washington, a church. I don't know anybody that can tell me how to get an annulment. And, you know what? If I am married to Ariel, I want it annulled. And I've got to find out how to do it, and I need an interpreter. Oh, you don't have to look anymore. Not anymore. It's me. You've got me. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bruni, uh, when you close this place up, you either got to lock the door or stop brewing this great smelling coffee. Sure, and I'll make you a deal. You say the lock, and I'll fetch you a cup. Eh? All right. Anything new on Aria? No, but I got a great lead on a dummy, though. I know, I know, I should. Would you believe that some damn fool went directly from the hospital to the Quartermain Mansion and confronted Domino, blew his cool, blew what was left of his cover, in fact, blew everything? Okay, all right. Tell me it was stupid, it was dumb, I blew the whole thing. Hey, you and Felicia can start a club. You do. You've done it already. You just want me to tell you you're right. I didn't want to tell him to go away. What'd you do it for? Because I thought it would make things better. But it hasn't. You know what's a um, funny thing about the senses? I can sense your tension, your tears, how much you love Colton, but I can't see that marriage license. It doesn't exist for a blind person. But it does exist. Does it? Yes. It's a piece of paper. Tear it up. It's binding. Legally, maybe. But is that really what bothers you? No. No, it's not. It isn't. 
feels like, it just feels like Colton and I are jinxed. I just love him so much, Tony. But it's like living with a ticking bomb, and every time his past comes up, it just explodes right in the middle of our face, and I can't take it anymore. I just can't take that. And we're all scared of the dark. Oh, yes, I'm afraid. You know, lately, I've learned that you don't have to be afraid of the dark. What you need to do is take time and learn to navigate in the unknown. 